Isabella Sweet Caroline, because good times never have felt so good. The Lioness is part of Into the Night after their historic win in the Euro 2022 final, beating Germany 2-1 in extra time. I can't say it enough, Richard. <laughs> say it I just want to keep time. saying it because it's actually real. And Nick Dixon is in Aylesbury at the former club of Lioness star Ellen White. Look at that smile! Nick Dixon, you were Scotsman and you're grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> Is that what this win has done? I'm happy for you, Kate. That's what this smile is all about. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the kids here are just thrilled to bits. It means so much to them that uh, England won that match yesterday. Uh, they've been out since half past five this morning. Uh, we can't keep them off the pitch here. They're going to be reliving their favourite moments from the game all day long. And they've been so inspired by England, not just during the final yesterday and winning the match and winning the Euros, of course, but throughout the tournament because these players mean so much to them. They're role models now. Let's have a chat with some of the players. But first... Uh, the ladies' coach here, Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hello. What kind of impact has this had already on the club and it's, the players? It's a huge impact. We've got so many girls and women coming to play football now. It's, I think um, visibility is so important. If they can see role models, it gives you something to aim for when you're older. So it's just, it's just so important for all these girls to, to have people to look up to. And Summer, you were watching the match with all your teammates yesterday. What did it mean to you? Absolutely everything. Like, <laughs> made me and probably other young girls want to keep going and try and reach their dreams. Of course. How about you? Did you, did you have a favourite moment from the match? Uh, the second goal, 100%. It really it made everyone feel more secure about the game and really more lifted up for the win. How did you feel in the last 10 minutes of the match yesterday? Well, um, I was really scared because uh, it was a draw, but then when it went to extra time, I was really relieved when... Um, Chloe Kelly scored. Of course, of course. I think everyone here has a new hero, Chloe Kelly, and I think the coaches are going to struggle to get these players off the pitch today, Kate. I bet, I bet. And they're taking it very seriously, rightly so. Thanks a lot, mate. Now, they brought football home, obviously, last night, and the Lionesses did uh, the something England's men haven't, actually winning a European title. So, the big question of the day, should they be... Paid more. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Not just equally, but more, mm. because women historically have been paid significantly less across most sports. So let's have a look at some of the differences. So looking at tennis, well, this is fairly... This is the most equal of the sports, in a way. At Wimbledon since 2007, the men and women's singles champions have been awarded the same amount. And this year, that was £2 million. OK, let's look at golf. Well, the winner of the men's 2022 British Open took home £2.1 million. That compared with this year's winner of the women's British Open, who'll take home around £839,000. Hmm. In the Cricket World Cup, the England's men's team took home £3.3 .3 million uh, in 2019, but the winner of the women's tournament won only... It's funny to say only about £1.1 <laughs> million, isn't it? But in comparison, £1.1 million earlier this year. And while the women and men's England teams get the same match fee for the Euros, I think it's uh, 2,000 per game, uh, that's men and women, so that's the same, Italy took home 28.5 million for winning the tournament last year, compared to the Lionesses, who took the trophy last night, but looked set to take home a fraction of that at about £1.7 million. Pounds. Hmm. Well, join us now uh, to discuss this is Alison Bender, football reporter and one of the earliest members of Women in Football who says, no, no, the women's team should not yet get paid more than the men's. And we've also got the former soccer player and current chair of the Professional Footballers Association, Clark Carlisle, who says, yeah, yeah, the Lionesses should get paid more than the men's team. Explain why and how it would work. I'm not the current PFA chair, but I was in, in a previous guys, Richard. Apologies. And uh, my, my viewpoint on this is not just to talk about in the context of achievement, you know, the, these women have achieved something that's absolutely monumental. Uh, we've seen the, the, the way that they've inspired these mm. young girls, you know, from four, four up, upwards, yeah. we were saying, at Wembley. There were so and how, many young kids How there. awesome that is. But when we talk about equality, um, people often think that it, it's like you said, in, in Wimbledon, to be paid exactly the same. But in, in the context of actually developing the women's game, we need to talk about the equity. 
And yeah. equity means that for 100 years, the women's game has been vastly underfunded... By who? ..and under-resourced. By who? Uh, by, the, by the FA, uh, by the national governing body. You know, so much so that they banned it for a few decades. So, so how is it then that in Italy, the women's team can, can clear over 27 million, and last night... Our women's team cleared less than two. I, and this is the point in question. You know, I believe that rather than having equality and the, the women's game being paid the same, we should have a period of time where they're overfunded. Why? You want you want to see a correction? So you see it's almost like positive discrimination, in a sense. No. The, problem uh, the problem is, problem though... Is... Sorry, you sorry, go ahead, Kate, but... No, you go <laughs> ahead. What I would say is I, I know that we see a lot of corrections and I, I obviously believe in equality and the fact that every young girl should be able to have the same opportunity to play football. For example, when I was at school growing up, we weren't even allowed to play football. This is changing. But as Clark said, I mean, football was banned for 50 years, from 1921, and... That means that it's a, it's a game in its infancy. It's almost like a start-up. You can't go throwing massive amounts of money without generating revenue, without having legacy. You mean ticket you need sales to and build... sponsorship and Exactly. And you actually yeah. need to build a proper, as we saw last night, you know, great fan base, mm. but a fan base that's going to pay the high ticket prices, buy the shirt sales, come to the mm. Women's Super League... You see, that's good economic that argument, kind of isn't it? Because where would... You talk about the FA giving them more money, but where would that money come from? If it's not coming from massive ticket sales, it's not coming from sponsorship, it's not coming from advertising, and would it actually also mean you would give less money to the men's team? Well, this is one of the, the kind of uh, confusions in around this area. The FA have a central pot. Right. They can allocate mm. funds according to, to what they believe the need is. And when we're talking about developing the women's game, you know, we often speak, like, like Alison just said, that it's a nascent sport. This has been going for a century. And when you look at the work that Dawn Airy and the fantastic team have done there at the WSL and the Women's Championship, how, with very, very little, they have created this uh, mm. infrastructure mm. and the quality of, of the women's game, so much so that they can go and win a national tournament. Imagine what they could do with more. Now, is, do, is incremental increase. Clark, so, is the argument, Clark, though, that... Because the, the money... The, the figures in men's fo football are bewildering. Astronomical. Astronomical. What, mm -hmm. what players get paid for... We, I mean, there's people getting, you know, mil silly, silly, silly money on any level. And that comes from, as you say, TV rights and all yeah. those kind of things that feeds into it, which, at the moment, women's football doesn't have. Is it something that should grow organically, though? Like, exactly. I was watching That's with, I the kids, with the kids, with my kids last night, and, first of all, during this tournament, Bill started saying, are you watching the match tonight, as mm -hmm. opposed to the women's match, yeah. which I thought was a really yeah. significant change. And then, you know, when Chloe scored that goal, he's, he's, he got, very luckily, one of those things that tells you your heartbeat for his birthday last week. <laughs> and uh, he went up to 100 beats a minute. He was like, oh, my God, that's even higher for the men's. So you've got a <laughs> son and a daughter who also, they both play football, um, who are now genuinely as excited by both things. Is that where it should grow from organically and then the money will come? That's, uh, that would be my argument. I think honest. it That's needs to come the other way around because marginal increase in, in funds means marginal and incremental progress when, it, when we're talking about facilities, right. infrastructure, the ability to develop an academy. Whereas if we front load that, yeah. if you loss lead that investment there and it, we, can, we trust the you know, Dawn area and the governance yeah. structure of the game to allocate that funding, ring fenced for oh. these very that specific is, that things. That is what's happening, to be fair. But, Alison, I mean, it, then we are. Just, what just, would be just, the just, What would the be the argument that... for slow growth, which, which, which Kate's yeah. made very eloquently and, and you agree with? But what's actually Actually wrong exactly. with, 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 with front line and spending it? more money on the women now. I don't think there's anything wrong in the fact. Uh, my worry is a backlash. You know, I, I do think that if you've got this pot of money that you can you can give to the women, mm. um, absolutely great. Backlash from who? But backlash from fans and a lot of people thinking it's a, it's a business. It's not a charity. It's all about revenue. You've got to bring in revenue into the game. And I feel that if the women's game is grown organically and slowly and properly, so it has a proper fan base and a legacy and people coming to the matches, mm. that will be much more sustainable. I'm actually trying to help the women's game here, but I'm saying that if you go and throw a load of money at any start-up, I, I don't want to call it a start-up, but this is a young game, 
And I feel like if you, if you throw loads of money at it early on and you don't have the sustainability, then actually... Well, what about the prize, what about the prize money? Well, should, should the prize money, the prize money, didn't they? And they made it equal prize money for men and women, and they said that was a statement mm. and an important statement, which emotionally then trickles out to how everybody views the two... Mm -hmm. the two sides, the two sports. So are there, is there an argument for statements? Statements are a good thing, absolutely. But I just, I, I, I feel like it, mm. I mean, a lot of the men give the money away to charity, for example, um, prize money and that kind of thing and, and fees for playing for England. But I don't think it's about that specifically. It's, it's okay. more about actually generating revenue and making sure this right. is and sustainable And just coming back to the forward. FA pot that you mm -hmm. spoke about, um, this central pot, where does that come from? Well, th that does come from sponsorship, it, you know, it mm. comes from uh, all the corporate aspects of, of the game. Um, but the way that they distribute it is how they see fit. And, and we're talking about the potential for viewing figures and participation. We've just had the world record or, or European record for mm. any fixture, men or female, in the European Championship. Mm. If that doesn't show you the potential of the women's game, and it's often viewed mm. as this combative, they're going to cannibalise mm -hmm. the supporters of the males' game. Mm. You, you see the makeup of that crowd. We're talking families from age of yes, four well, right up to the women's 90. tennis at Wimbledon would cannibalise and take away from Totally different there's, there's demographic, and that's what they should be funded, to be able to exploit. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the revenue will come later da down the road as long as we can give the game the seed funding in order mm. to provide the facilities that are going to cater for okay. this very different well, demographic you both make very that compelling we attract in the men's actually. game. I can, I can see both points it, of view very I just, strongly. I just have to add, though, but it's really important to say that the FA and the UEFA, and UEFA are already doing that. They are putting so much money into the women's game. They're making sure that there's so many opportunities. They're mm. hoping to double participation by 2024. So all of these things are coming. Well, but it's just the big headline they've figures. They've certainly that been the given a springboard money. by the yeah. England women's team yesterday. That is a real springboard for action. Even if it's not as far as you want them to go, they should really step up to that plate because they won't get a chance like this again. Well, you know, you say it's uh, incredible, incredibly difficult to launch, it's impossible to relaunch. Mm. Now, to mm. have the opportunity from here with all of the, the, um, the interest and mm. momentum, yeah. the, the, so the inspiration that comes from this, yeah. it needs to be... And, you know, exploited. there were predictions Rise before it joy. was actually televised, there were predictions that the ratings for this weren't going to be very good at all, that people were going to switch off. Record ratings. I mean, the millions and that's millions. That's what we're fighting against. against. Yeah, People's perceptions good. are still anchored in what they believe used to happen. What is currently happening? Get with it. Yeah. And go with the program. And we need to see Keep filter coming. through. So, so obviously that was the final. That was the final at Wembley. It's huge. But we've got to see this in attendances in the Women's Super League, for example. And having it on BBC and Sky is helping. And is all great. of this is helping. It's great. Brilliant. Thank you both. Absolutely brilliant. We're going to keep smiling.